My top 10 favorite movies that I watched in 2022. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a top 10 list of my favorite 10 movies that I saw in 2022. Now, this is a disclaimer that these aren't movies that have came out in 2022, like their new releases. These are just movies that I saw for the first time in 2022. Normally I keep a list of every movie that I watched in the year, but there was a time where I needed to completely reset my computer. So I did lose some of the movies that I did watch this year. However, if I really like a movie, I usually do a review on it. So so I went back and looked through all the reviews I did this year. It was very difficult, not only for me to come to only 10 picks, but also to put them in order because even the top three, it is painful for me not to put each one of those as number one for this year because I absolutely loved them and there were some fantastic movies that I saw this year. So without further ado, let's jump into number 10 and number 10 is A Perfect Murder. Now I really like this movie. It is kind of like a remake of an old Hitchcock movie. Each time I was surprised at where they took the story, where they expanded the story and there are some very realistic things that they do but at the same time it catches you very off guard so this one's just a very twisty murder mystery and almost nothing that you expect to happen actually happens which is great for a mystery love this one i just feel like it could have been a little more polished and i wish the story was unique and not a copy but fantastic nonetheless a perfect murder number 10. all right guys number nine and this one is legends of the fall now Technically, this one is a little bit cheesy. It's a long story-driven movie. Um, it has a lot of romance. This one's just a nice classic tale, a slow movie, a great story beginning to end. I think it starts with Brad Pitt as a kid and goes all the way till the end. This one is just something to really take your mind off things, something to just go to another world and just a classic story. I love this one beginning to end. A little drama heavy, maybe a little bit cheesy, but for me, I didn't catch any cheesiness. I love it just an epic long story love this one legends of the fall number nine all right guys number eight and that is what lies beneath now what lies beneath is kind of like a paranormal mystery movie and it starts off and pretty much all the things you see in the first 30 minutes 45 minutes nothing really goes the way it seems like it's gonna go once you get to the end and you reveal like what the story is about what the twist is about who the bad guy is in the story. It's just so out in left field and nothing that you would expect after seeing the first 30 to 45 minutes of this movie. So on top of that, it seems to be more of like a horror scary style movie, but I forget the, the two main actor and actresses in here. They're fantastic. I know Harrison Ford's in here, but the other woman in here, she's fantastic with the acting as well. And I felt like their maturity makes this movie a little bit better than just a typical horror movie. So number eight, what lies beneath? Number seven and number six are pretty similar to me and they're actually named the exact same thing but the movies are about 15 years apart so I liked these ones about the same I could kind of go either way on them so number six and number seven are The Gift from 2000 and The Gift from 2015. Now, they're very different styles of movies, but I really, really enjoy both of them. Um, the Gift from 2000 is, it's really rough. Um, you have Keanu Reeves just absolutely being a madman. He's hitting women. He's saying all sorts of just crazy derogatory terms. And it was just very shocking. It was interesting to see that side of the story, but about 45 minutes in, there is a murder mystery. And at that point, the whole movie kind of turns into a whodunit. I actually like who the killer ends up being. I didn't expect it to be that person. And I would say the first 45 minutes are kind of just a hick town and people just doing things in a hick town. Very rough, very low class. But again, once you get to about 45 minutes in, there is a murder and the mystery beyond that point is fantastic. I didn't expect it. And then you have the gift from 25. Now, the gift from 2015 is really good. It's a little bit of a slow burn. And for about the first 40, 45 minutes, it's just this awkward guy 
coming to this couple and apparently this guy knows the male when they used to go to high school together you could tell that they kind of don't really want to deal with him but they're dealing with him just to be nice and he keeps giving them gifts just over and over so that is a little bit annoying at the first 45 minutes it's just like can we see something besides this guy awkwardly coming over and giving gifts the characters actually change a bit in the movie there's some characters that seem like they're good that end up being bad some characters that seem bad that end up being good once you find out the final twist of this movie it's almost jaw-dropping how deep it goes i've never seen a movie do something this deep have this much of a revenge style twist i just really liked where this movie went it went to an extreme ending and it really really is memorable i liked them both so number six and number seven are the gift from 2015 and the gift from 2000 i like them just about the same, although they're very different. All right, guys, number five is Rear Window. Now, Rear Window is probably my favorite movie before The Godfather. I think The Godfather came out like late 1970s, something like that. So obviously I like older films, but it's easier for me to get into newer films. But Rear Window just absolutely blew me away. It's probably gonna be my favorite Hitchcock movie by far. It's kind of like a whodunit, but it's just done so incredibly well it's so easy to watch i could see myself watching this again i could see myself watching this with friends like once you kind of have an idea who the bad guy is it doesn't do too much flipping it around or extra mysteries or extra twists but this is kind of like the original good mystery who done it to me and i just loved this movie blew me away saw it in 4k my favorite older movie before the godfather number five is rear window number four is fall now it seems like a lot of people didn't have the same reaction that I did when I saw this movie. I saw this movie in theaters with my friend and he wasn't that impressed. I showed some people uh, the movie on my laptop. They weren't that impressed, but I really was impressed with this movie. It took me to a very emotional place. I felt very, I mean, to be honest, borderline scared because I have a fear of heights and this movie just constantly just shakes that fear of heights out of you. Like, I don't think I seen another movie that is this crazy I'm making you feel a fear of heights like it is crazy and it also has a few emotional points in the movie there's a little bit of twist that you don't expect at least me it was just very intense it very emotional it really got a lot out of me and I was blown away by it. Now, again, it's going to be better in theaters, but if you have even a mild fear of heights, I would be absolutely shocked if this movie doesn't make you feel that fear of heights because, wow, the best fear of heights movie I've ever seen. So enjoyable. Got so much out of me. Number four is Fall. All right, guys, now we're on to the top three, and these are legitimately, I am struggling not to put each one of these as number one, and only based on my personal experience can I even rate them one, two, and three, because they are so, so good, and it hurts me not putting all three of these as number one. I just had to say that. So number three is Alita Battle Angel. Now, I just did a, a review on this. I absolutely love it. It's got to be my favorite, most entertaining CGI movie that I've ever seen. It has pretty much every element that you'd want in a normal movie. There's a little bit of romance. There's some really hard-to-watch aggressive scenes, although it's PG-13. You have pretty much a human face, and people have have like robot bodies so there is times where people go out and you know there's like a black market they hold them down and they saw off their basically their arms or their limbs there are robot arms or robot limbs but you see them just yelling in pain as their body part is being stolen so it has a little bit of hard to watch it's not just like a fluffy pg-13 movie alita is super intense the action is super intense it doesn't feel like watered down in any way it feels you know great and uh, robert rodriguez Rodriguez had a hand in this and James Cameron had a hand in this and they have done a lot of really good intense movies in the past so I think that's what helps this movie retain its intensity and our entertainment value throughout while being kind of like a PG-13 sci-fi movie. Really loved Alita so hard for me not to put it as number one but I'm going with number three. All right guys number two is Top Gun Maverick. Now I gotta say this movie is probably the closest to 
a perfect on this list. This movie blew me away. It was entertaining beginning to end. They did throwbacks to everything that was great about the original Top Gun, but then also had enough news to where it felt like a new story. There's new fresh faces and this movie was just absolutely perfect. Like I cannot think of one thing that they did wrong, one thing that they could have done better. And it's amazing how far away you were from the original Top Gun to make something this good. I think anybody who's an adrenaline junkie absolutely needs to see this. And when you see it, I don't know what it is. You think, ah, oh, Top Gun, I don't know if I'm gonna be into it. Like an adrenaline junkie it just doesn't seem like, oh, I don't know if I wanna see it, but it is that good. Again, it pains me not to put this at number one but I had a little bit more of a personal response to number one but Top Gun Maverick absolute must see for any adrenaline junkie I love it number two all right guys number one is No Time to Die now No Time to Die absolutely blew me away and it's something that I just when I see it on paper all the things that they're doing different compared to the original James Bonds it seems like something I just wouldn't be a part of but I absolutely loved this movie and the scenes between James and his girl, I don't, I don't remember his girl's name in this because I saw this a couple months ago, but their chemistry what puts this movie overboard. And it's mainly, to be honest, his girl. She gets so much emotion out of you in these scenes. Like there's one scene where, there's a scene where James thinks his girl sold him out and they're being hunted by all these guys with machine guns. James Bond has bulletproof glass around the window and he just lets all these guys shoot the windows over and over and over as his girl's just freaking out. Also, when he forces her to leave at the train station, it's just like, oh, those scenes are so intense. And then on top of that, the actual ending is just, oh. Now, the ending does something that no other James Bond has ever done and I'm not really, it's not really my favorite choice that they made this decision, but man, does it just really, again, pull it out of me. Just so much emotion and intensity. The way that they took the ending of this movie, wow. Like I've, I've literally rewatched the ending of this movie maybe 20 times just because it wakes me up. It's so intense. I've watched it in the morning. I went on pretty much the worst possible vacation I could ever go on the last four days and it was in March and I had this movie on my laptop this movie was so good that I was able to at least while I was watching the movie get taken out of all the other stuff that I was dealing with all the other BS going on and shocked in a good way how good this movie is so no Time to Die, I absolutely love it. It's mainly that girl selling the emotional scenes. And again, it's mainly that I watched this during a really hard time. It was so good that I kind of forgot the hard time. The ending in the train scene when he leaves her at the train, they just have so much intensity to me. I can literally get up in the morning and kind of use it as a cup of coffee because it's so intense and so good and I love it. Anyways, guys, have you seen any of these movies? Have you not seen any of these movies? I'll be very interested to see what your favorite picks are from this year, 2022. What movies have you seen that you've liked this year? Anyways, guys, we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and I couldn't do it without any of you guys' help. You guys are the best. Having a great day out here. Hopefully having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace.